We've called the exhibition Time Machines after Wells's The Time Machine. But Palace Green is a space for exhibiting books and manuscripts, and we're thinking about the way in which stories allow us to travel in time, that books are time machines, and every time we read a book, we are, in a sense, travelling in time. We're thinking about how stories move us through time. Stories take us on journeys into the past or offer us visions of the future. They make us think about where we are now. They make us reflect differently on our own world. And that time travel makes us kind of revisit our own place in the world, our own place in time in a new way. What I think will surprise people is that time travel is not just some niche science fiction interest, but time travel is something that not only is a really important component of all kinds of different storytelling, but which is something that we do every day in our own lives when we recall our memories and when we plan for the future. My name's Simon James, I'm Professor of Victorian Literature at the Department of English Studies, Durham University, and I'm one of the academic leads on the exhibition Time Machines. My second academic home after Durham is the University of Illinois at Champaign-Urbana, where I was lucky enough to be awarded a fellowship a few years ago to spend a month there working with H.G. Wells's manuscripts. We're very lucky that the University of Illinois has lent us some of the material, and at its heart, of course, is the manuscript of the time machine. It's just wonderful to be able to welcome this, uh, this wonderful object to, to Durham. In the exhibition, we travel back into the 19th century past, and we'd like every visitor to the exhibition to feel like a time traveller, to take ownership of the stories in which they themselves will appear in the future. Time travel, as we're thinking about it, is a narrative technique that's not just a part of science fiction, that so many narratives flash forward and flash back. Even a story as old as the Iliad, for instance, doesn't begin with the judgment of Paris, but begins in the ninth year of the Trojan War, and we infer the rest of the story from that. And we're very interested in the way in which so many well-loved stories are time travel stories. Think about A Christmas Carol, for instance, that Scrooge is a time traveller. He travels into his past and then he sees the Christmas present and then he travels into the future as well and sees his own possible future. We begin the exhibition with the Victorian understanding of time, particularly the expansion of the notion of time and Victorian geology showing that the Earth is far, far older than many people had believed. This hugely enlarged the scope of time in, in human thought over the course of the 19th century. The notion of time held by Victorians like Wells was still essentially Newtonian, uh, very linear and very Western. This is revolutionised in the early 20th century, of course, uh, by Einstein. After Einstein's theories of relativity, time and space are irretrievably linked. And we represent this in the exhibition through looking at books that, that explore alternate worlds that might be parallel histories. While this is an exhibition largely about stories, the most wonderful thing about it is that it's so beautiful that I would hope that stepping into Palace Green feels like stepping into a time machine, that it, it should feel like travelling in time going through this exhibition. I'm Jenny Terry and I work in the English department at Durham University. My area is African American and Caribbean literature, literature of the black diaspora, so also sometimes including black British. We all leap in time in different ways and for the writers I look at, a relationship with the past, an interest in memory, sometimes a speculative vision of the future that makes us see our present in a different way. Those things are all at the heart of what much of these texts do. My kind of pathway to being involved in the exhibit was really to do with trying to give a different angle on what time travel might mean whether that's through feminist texts of the 60s, 70s into the 80s that thought about futures in terms of gender expectation and gender role that give future visions or use a device of, of time travel to try and counteract, to try and offer an alternative to the dominant kind of time travel story, or whether it's through Afrofuturist texts, so texts by authors from the Black Diaspora 
who are trying to rewrite a sense of a future that's previously been defined by a European or a European-American imagination. One example of that would be Octavia Butler's Kindred, which offers its own take on a time travel device a time travel that's not about men and machines, that's not about ambition or exploration in one sense of the word, but that's about a kind of personal journey back into family history, a history that also turns out to be national history, the history of slavery, of ancestors who were slaveholders and slaves. For me, one of the really exciting parts of the exhibition is some of the closing audio-visual material. We come right up to the present day with music video imagery, artwork. Um, we see people like the contemporary musician Janelle Monet. We hear tracks like The Future is Female by Madame Gandhi. And we see how that material in different ways, is posing that same question, is making us think about the tale of the past, the present and the future, who has shaped that, how we can reshape it, and what the possibilities are when we start telling our own stories, when we start thinking about our own way of reimagining a future world. Wells believed that his readers and everyone in the world should be better educated. And one of the things that we want people to take away from the exhibition is that to be better informed about the world around you is to be empowered, that by taking control of our own stories, we might be able to shape the future for the better, as Wells himself would have hoped.